Hello, and welcome to Lunch and Learn Bible Study. I am Pastor Bruce McKinney, and I will be your instructor for today. Uh, today, we will be studying part three of our series, Love and Marriage. This is the uh, finale of this series. And so before we get into our Bible study, let us uh, go into prayer. Dear God, we thank you for watching over us and keeping us, Lord, being with us each and every day. We pray, dear Lord, that you will watch over everyone that is uh, viewing this video, be with their families, Lord. And we pray, dear God, that you will open up our hearts, our minds, and our understanding to what it is that you have for us in your word today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we uh, thank you again for watching or listening or doing both. And uh, <laughs> we are going to go into our Bible study today. So let's get started. All right. So we're going to go back to the book of Genesis and we're going to look at Genesis, the second chapter, the 20th verse. And it reads like this. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So here God had told Adam to name all the animals. He brought them to him and he named each one and whatever he called it, that was the name of it. And, but the verse ends with, but for Adam, no suitable helper was found. In other words, no one was compatible. Not There was not a creature there on earth that was compatible for Adam. So Adam was, and, and God has said in the 19th uh, verse, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. So that was the whole reason for Adam looking and, and naming these animals was to find a companion or to let him see that currently what was there was not compatible with him, okay? So we go on to the 21st verse and it reads like this. It says, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. So this is the book of Genesis. This is the book of beginnings. And this is the first surgery. Okay. God performed surgery on, on Adam. He gave him anesthesia. He went to sleep and he was, uh, while he was sleeping, he opened him up, took out a rib, and then he closed him up, closed it, closed the place with flesh. He Put them back together, okay? The first surgery and very successful because the God, God Almighty performed it, okay? So now let's see what happens from this process of removing this rib from Adam. And verse 22 says, Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. Very important statement. And he brought her to the man. God put them together. Okay. And there's a lot that can be said about that. And I don't, we don't have the time to uh, fully get into that, but I want you to understand that concept. And he brought her to the man. In other words, God put this couple together. And I know a lot of you may have been uh, looking and things like that. And, and, um, uh, what I am saying here is that you, you need to make sure you're talking to God about that process, about uh, who you are going to marry and things like that. So anyway, let's move on. And so in the 23rd verse, it says this, the man said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of the man. So Adam looks at this situation. You may remember this from the last video. Uh, and I call this uh, evaluating your relationship. God looked at her and he said, this is now bone of my bone. She has something in her that's in me. 
And then he says, in flesh of my flesh, that we are compatible. We, 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 we look similar, okay? And he said, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of me. There's something in her that is also in me. So let's move on. And now Genesis uh, 24, uh, second chapter, the 24th verse, and it reads like this. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Now, let's talk about this just for a minute here. It says, that is why a man leaves his father and mother. Now, does he desert them? Does he abandon them? No, that's not the case. What this is referring to is that person becomes independent. They're able to support themselves. Now, are you going to need help occasionally once in a while? Once in a while. Let me emphasize that. As a parent and a grandparent, once in a while. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but the point is that the married couple is basically independent, except for maybe some exceptional situations and things like that, and is united to his wife. They leave to establish their own household, to establish uh, their home and things like that. And they become one flesh. Now, so often we think of this as the consummation of the marriage. Yes, that may be one of one part of it, but there are other parts to becoming one flesh. That means singleness of mind, singleness of purpose. You can't be moving one direction and your spouse is moving another direction. You all have to sit down, work out, and figure out what plan you all are going to work with, okay? what Which direction we are going, what we're going to do. Let me tell you, other than birthdays and Valentine's Day and Christmas, there should be very few surprises in marriage, okay? the Each one should know what is going on in the marriage, all right? So that's part of becoming one flesh. So let's move on to the uh, 25th verse, and it reads like this. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. So we know that they had no clothes. This was before the fall and everything. They had no clothes. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. That's an important statement. They felt no shame. One was and said, oh, you got a pimple there. And the other one said, well, you got a, a scratch there. None of that. Okay. They felt no shame. So let's look at that. Uh, Adam and Eve were physically, were both physically exposed. All their, their good parts and their, their flaws and all that was before one another but they felt no shame from each other. Why did they feel no shame? Because neither one was condemning the other. Neither one was uh, talking about the other, or putting them down or criticizing or anything like that, okay? Now, in marriage, you should be able to be physically and emotionally exposed to your spouse without shame. Okay, I want you to understand that because if I have a situation, I should be able to tell that to my spouse. I, if I'm feeling something, I should be able to tell that to my wife and everything, and she should be able to tell me, okay, without a lot of, uh, without criticism so much, okay? Sometimes a person just wants you to listen. They want a, a sounding board, uh, uh, right? And they need a comfortable space to do that. Uh, that's one reason we have counselors. And I'm, I'm glad for counselors because it is a much needed profession. But also we as, a, as married couples can serve as one another's counselors. We can be the, the sounding board and everything. No, we don't have all the answers, but we can give support. And that is what a marriage should be. A marriage should be your safe haven, your safe place, 
your place where you can say what's on your mind without condemnation. Uh, now, what you're saying may be right, may be wrong, but you should be able to express that and then you all work that out. And then sometimes you can't work it out. You can't give the answer. Uh, but maybe you all can pray about it together. Or just sometimes what a person needs is someone to listen. Not that you have all the answer, but th that your home should be a safe space for that. Okay? Um, one thing that causes problems with marriage is when people cannot be themselves at their own home. And they need to be able to do that. So that concludes our study today. I just want you to let you know that your marriage, your home should be your safe space, just like Adam and Eve in the Bible talks about. It says, and Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. So I want to thank you for watching. And I pray that you got something out of that that you can apply to your everyday life when you apply, apply to your marriage. And I pray God's blessing on you and thank you for watching.